An ACLU report released this week examines the use of surveillance technology by local law enforcement. The report finds numerous cities and counties throughout California testing or using surveillance, in many cases without informing the public. In San Jose this week, community concerns flared over the police department's quiet purchase of a drone. It's led to calls for more public input and oversight. Joining me with analysis now are Nicole Ozer from ACLU Northern California and author of the recent report, Santa Clara County Supervisor Joe Samidian, and BART Deputy Police Chief Ben Farrow. Hello to you all. And Nicole, I want to start with you. What kinds of surveillance technologies are being purchased by cities and counties and how much public input is there? You know, we see cities and counties up and down the state of California spending vast sums of money on surveillance technology, everything from license plate readers to facial recognition to drones, as you mentioned, in San Jose more than $65 million, and with little to no public debate, um, very little consideration of the costs and benefits, and very few policies in place to make sure that misuse doesn't happen. And we're seeing this happen over and over, largely because a lot of local law enforcement is taking advantage of federal funds that are coming down, and they're often sidestepping the normal oversight procedures that city councils and board of supervisors have used for generations to make sure that there's really thoughtful consideration of community issues and that the public knows about these issues and can speak up and voice their concerns early in the process. So, so we've heard a lot about those civil liberty concerns. Should we be using these surveillance technologies at all? That is, are privacy protections and um, public safety mutually exclusive in this case? No, I, I don't think so, Twee. I, I think you can both protect the public and respect their privacy rights at the same time. I, you know, whether you're talking about cameras, drones, license plate readers, I, I have supported all of those at various times and places, but always with the caveat, you know, that we ask and answer some important questions. Do, do we really need the data? If so, who's going to have access to it? What kind of safeguards are in place? Is it going to be kept in perpetuity? Because that raises some other questions. What's the difference between a mass sweep for data for law-abiding citizens as opposed to something that's targeted on folks who actually are likely to be bad guys? So I think you can use, it's not the tools that are the problem. I mean, I'm a Silicon Valley guy, so I would tell you it's not the technology that's the problem, it's the way in which we use them. And absent some of these questions and answers that the ACLU report very wisely raises, um, I think you have to expect that there's going to be misuse and abuse. And, and you're actually proposing some policies around this I am. next uh, Tuesday. That's right. On Tuesday at our Board of Supervisors, what I've done is ask that our board refer the matter to uh, the appropriate committee, direct our staff to look at a model ordinance. We're going to start with the model ordinance that the ACLU had. We'll, we'll tweak it. We'll look at other jurisdictions. It won't be uh, exactly what's off the shelf because every jurisdiction is different. But we need to have both policies in place and uh, an enforceable ordinance that says, if and when we choose to use these, we're going to use these wisely and we're going to know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and then we're going to have the safeguards in place. And I think we can do that. And, and uh, Deputy Chief Benson uh, with uh, Faro, I'm sorry, with BART. Um, BART has wearable cameras that officers can clip onto their uniforms. You have this app now where people can take pictures and report a crime in progress. So you have various surveillance technologies. Why do you feel it's necessary to have it? Well, there's no question that technology can help uh, serve as a force multiplier for a law enforcement agency, uh, especially in today's climate where there's a lot of budget cuts. We don't have the staffing that we'd like to have. Uh, having technology at our disposal to work on solving crimes is an absolute must have. Uh, one only has to look at Boston bombing, the Boston Marathon bombing, or in 2005, the bombing uh, that occurred at the London uh, Transit to, to see the, the value in it. Uh, but I agree, you know, the truth somewhere in the middle. Yeah, there, there needs to be some safeguards, um, and, and in the end, it probably will end up somewhere in the middle. And what kinds of policies do you have in place surrounding the use of this technology? Uh, how, what kinds of data are collected? How long it's kept for? Uh, well, for instance, with the body-worn cameras, we have a policy in place that talks about when we delete uh, information and how it could be held. Uh, as was mentioned, if there's a crime attached to it, it gets held until that investigation's over. But if it's just uh, a casual contact with a citizen, uh, it gets deleted after a certain amount of time. And there, are, there have been studies done that show that 
in communities that have these technologies, there was uh, Rialto in San Bernardino County where once officers started using cameras, there was uh, an 88% drop in complaints filed against officers, a 60% drop in use of force by police. So clearly these are tools that do work in a community, Nicole. I think the important thing to really consider is to figure out what are the issues that each community is dealing with and what are going to be the best solutions to address that. You know, not every city and county is the same, but what we've seen consistently is the inconsistency that's happening up and down the state that, you know, communities are deploying surveillance without asking the basic questions about why are we doing this? How are we going to do it? How, what is it going to do for our community and how are we going to protect our community members from it from being misused? Um, and when we look at sort of what's happening in, in different cities and counties, maybe there are policies in place for body cameras, but then there are no policies in place for facial recognition. So what this ordinance does is really make sure that there's a consistent conversation happening across technologies and that these basic questions get asked and answered before any programs go forward. And these issues are coming up amid a backdrop of much broader concerns, NSA spying, right. and the Wall Street Journal had a report out this week talking about how the U.S. Marshal's Office uh, is using devices that collect data from cell phones, not of just criminals, but law-abiding citizens. Well, well, again, it's it's not just the individual. I mean, you think, well, one piece of data, so what? But when you start to put all of those pieces of data together, so we know not only were you parked in front of the oncologist last Tuesday, but the following Tuesday and the following Tuesday and the following Tuesday, that starts to tell us something about your health situation. Or if it turns out you were parked at the racetrack day after day after day, or if it turns out you were parked someplace you shouldn't be, um, or, or that somebody thinks you shouldn't be, or if we've got that license plate reader at Let's say, Twee, you're going to the gun show at the fairgrounds, or that Ben's going to the anti-war protest in Berkeley. You know, click, click, click. And then you assemble all that data, and it has the potential to be misused. So I think, you know, all of us would say, hey, the potential uses are great, and all of us want to catch the bad guys, and all of us want to deter crime. But we want to do that in a way that is respectful of people's personal privacy. And I think the, the risk is when you put all of that data together, all of a sudden, you paint a pretty big picture of somebody's personal life, and if you keep it in perpetuity, the, the risk of abuse goes up dramatically. Well, so give me some specifics here. You would like to see legislation around this. What specific uh, proposals would you like to see in place? How long should data be kept? How sh uh, what I, kind of data you, should be collected? You know, I, 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 when I was in the state senate, I had a bill that said that the data from these license plate readers ought to be purged after six months. I couldn't get that bill off the Senate floor. Why? And, well, because we got pushback from law enforcement as well as the private sector because these folks wanted to keep the data forever. And I kept saying, look, surely there's a sensible compromise between six months and forever. That forever is a long time. Can't we find a time? But, it, it, you know, if you don't keep the data, then you can't misuse or abuse it. So uh, for me, one of the starting points is collect only what you truly need. Know that you have a purpose. Don't collect it just because you can, and then purge it after some reasonable period of time. But, you know, the default has been, hey, if we can collect it all, collect it all, and since storage is cheap, we'll keep it forever. I, I think those are two mindsets that need to be addressed pretty directly. And we're dealing with incredibly invasive technologies here. We're talking about things like stingrays that, you know, can actually track cell phones of not just one individual that the police might be targeting, but actually hundreds or thousands of phones of innocent people that might be in the vicinity. Stingrays are a prime example of a technology that cities and counties throughout California have been quietly and secretly purchasing without the public knowing, often policymakers not knowing, and even keeping it secret from judges. So we're dealing with really invasive surveillance technology that's being purchased and deployed and has a real impact on the civil liberties and civil rights of Californians. And there just needs to be basic transparency and accountability for these uses. Ben, do you feel like the technologies you're using are achieving the results you want? Are, are, are there and and are there uh, aggressive efforts to, 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 uh, to analyze that and make sure that there aren't unintended consequences? Uh, well, again, no doubt that it is achieving its goals. Uh, it, it's helping us. BART has had video uh, on its system since its inception. So uh, BART has used video to solve many a crime in the system. Uh, the 
taser cameras that our, our personnel are currently wearing have helped immensely when it comes to uh, not only crimes showing what actually happened from the officer's viewpoint, but also helping with misconduct investigation, okay. showing how the officer acted. All right. So no doubt about it, it's working. We, uh, will, we will have to let you have the last word on that. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> we're out of time okay. here. But thank you very much to all of you. Uh, ben Farrow, BART Deputy Police okay. Chief, Nicole Ozer with ACLU, and also Santa Clara County Supervisor Joe Samidian. Thank you all.